Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this video, you are going to learn how to detect device shakes in Unity and how to make a simple game which does something like this when you shake your Android or iPhone. Yay! Flying all over the place. Making games is exciting, but it's also a lot of work. Create games more quickly when you plan your week and track your time with Week Sweep. Start saving time now and get the app from the link in the description. So, some of you may be now wondering, hey Riso, you do an Unity tutorials now, what's up with that? Well, if you check out some of my older stuff, older tutorials, I started off with Unity and only then I migrated towards Android development, first through Xamarin and then to like normal native Android development. And now I am coming back to Unity for a little while at least, so let's get started. First up, we need to create three sprites, which are going to be hexagon, square and a triangle. You can create sprites really easily even through Unity. Uh, because this is just a test project, so we can have such crappy sprites. So <laughs> triangle will suffice and also square and hexagon will suffice for our sprites in here in this tutorial. So we're going to create, oh, not diamond, but hexagon. So create sprites hexagon and also create sprites and square. All right, we are going to delete this diamond and we are going to put all of these sprites into the scene. So let's drag them in here. All right, now we need to add rigid body 2D to these three game objects. So we are going to add component. We are gonna search for rigid body and 2D. We need to enable continuous collision detection and that should be probably it. We are going to copy this rigid body 2D. So copy component and paste it into square. So paste uh, component as new and also hexagon and paste component as new. Then we need to create colliders for all of these game objects, now rigid bodies. So we are going to add component collider and 2D. For this triangle, we need to actually add a Polygon Collider 2D. It's going to automatically adhere to the triangle's shape. And for the square, we are going to add Square Collider or actually Box Collider 2D. That's how it's called. And for the hexagon, we are going to again add Polygon Collider 2D. Then let's create an empty game object. So right click and create empty. We are going, it's not going to be a child of hexagon, it's just going to be alone in the hierarchy. We are going to name this Collider Holder. All right, and this will only hold a single collider, so add component. This collider will be Edge Collider 2D. We are going to zoom out a little bit and we are going to click on Edit Collider over here. And you can see this line. We are going to pull it all a bit down, actually. Now, we basically want to create a little like a little box around all of these three game objects around this triangle, square and hexagon. So just grab it, create a new node on this edge collider, pull it all the way up, create another node, pull this to the right another note and pull this one down and make it look like a proper square, proper rectangle actually, not square. So, all right, this is probably cool. We can stop editing this collider. And now we need to create a bouncy material because otherwise these three rigid bodies, these geometric shapes would get actually would get stuck on this collider on this edge collider so we need to create a new physics material 2d so create physics material 2d and we are going to name this bouncy material and its bounciness will be 0 0.1 and its friction will be actually zero because we don't want to have any friction so that these three rigid bodies will not get stuck to it. 
Now let's select Collider Holder from the hierarchy and let's put this bouncy material onto the material field of this Edge Collider 2D. So now this Collider Holder will have an Edge Collider which is bouncy. Now let's create another empty game object. Uh, it's going to be named Gameplay Controller. Now in the Assets folder, let's create a new child folder. It's going to be named Scripts. Open it up and we are going to create a new C Sharp script. Its name will be Physics Controller. Let's open this script up in Visual Studio, so double click. We can delete this void start and void update lifecycle methods and we are going to create a public float shake force multiplier and actually it should be capitalized because it's public so shake force multiplier then public rigid body 2d array we are going to control physics th through these rigid body 2ds and its name of this array will be shaking rigid bodies All right, and then we are going to have just one simple method, public void shake rigid bodies. It's going to accept one argument, which will be of type vector three. And this will be the device acceleration, which we are going to get from another script, which we will write in just a little while, in a little bit. Device acceleration will be this variable's name. And inside this method, we are going to have a for each loop. And for each var rigid body in shaking rigid bodies, we are going to do a really simple thing. We are going to apply a force on each of the rigid body inside the array. So for each rigid body, we are going to add a force on this rigid body. That force will have size of device acceleration which we are going to get from another script and we are going to multiply this device acceleration so that it is actually bigger because the acceleration vector is not really huge so it would not even shake those rigid bodies you would not even see it inside your game so we need to multiply this device acceleration with some value and that will be shake force multiplier so let's select this and the force mode 2d will be just an impulse because we don't want to apply this force continuously we just want to apply an impulse and then stop applying that force right because that's how when you shake something in real life that's how the forces are actually applied it's just an impulse it's not a continuous force all right so let's get back to unity editor and we are going to apply or actually put this physics controller onto our gameplay controller and now let's select it. The shake force multiplier will be five. So let's put this value in here. And shaking rigid bodies will have size of three. And we are going to put triangle, square, and also hexagon as a shaking rigid body. Awesome. Now let's create a new C sharp script. It's going to be called shake detector. And let's also open it up inside Visual Studio. All the way on the top, we are going to put an annotation saying that this script requires component of type. So type off and the type of the component is physics controller because this shake detector will not be able to work without physics controller attached to the game object on which this shake detector is attached. So we aren't going to have any problem with that because we already have a uh, physics controller attached to this gameplay controller game object so uh, it's going to be here there but otherwise if it wasn't there the physics controller we would get compilation error saying that we need to attach physics controller to the gameplay controller game object if we put this shake detector script on here cool now let's create a bunch of fields the first two ones will be public float the first one's name will be shake detection threshold. The second name will be public float. And its name will be min shake interval. 
because when you are shaking, you are going to get like 10 shakes registered per one shake because the shaking doesn't happen just once. We are measuring the acceleration of the device. And when the acceleration is above this shake detection threshold, you are going to get shakes. But it's not just one shake when, when you accelerate your device. It's like probably 10 or 20 shakes are happening because in the update method, it's going to be registered many, many times that you have a high acceleration of your device, right? So that's why we need to apply a main shake interval. So we are detecting shakes only like five times per second so that you aren't going to get duplicate shakes per one real shake in what you do with your device, right? And then we are going to have private float squared shake detection threshold. So SQR for short is square shake detection threshold. I'm going to explain why we need this field in just a little bit. And then also private float time since last shake. All right. And then we need to have one private physics controller. It's going to be named simply physics controller. And inside the void start, which initializes this script, we are going to set the squared shake detection threshold to be the squared shake detection threshold, which we have as a public float. So we are going to use math f dot power and we are going to put shake detection threshold to the power of two. We could also just multiply it simply, but I think that this is much nicer to look at this syntax. And we need to square this because we are going to be using squared magnitude of acceleration vector and not a magnitude. When you are doing a square root, it's quite taxing on the CPU. So that's why we are using a squared magnitude because then you don't have to do a square root of those variables inside the vector. So it's not as taxing on the CPU. And when you want to use a squared magnitude, you also have to have a squared shake detection threshold so that it matches. It's all squared. We are, we can check them both at the same time. And then also in the void star, we are going to get physics controller is going to be equal to get component of type physics controller. And that's it. Then inside void update, we are going to check if input dot acceleration and we are going to get the squared magnitude so that it's not as taxing on the CPU. And if this squared magnitude is greater or equal than the squared shake detection threshold. So that's why we need to have this squared because we are checking it with a squared magnitude, as I've explained previously. And also if time dot unscaled time is greater or equal than time since last shake. You could, by the way, also use a normal time, not unscaled, but I like to use unscaled because when you are messing with scaled time in uh, your, with time scale in your game, it's not going, going to mess up this shake detection. So if it's greater than time since last shake plus min shake interval, we are going to actually send a message to the physics controller that it should shake its rigid bodies. So shake uh, rigid bodies. And we need to push a value of the acceleration vector. So we are going to put input that acceleration into this shake rigid bodies method as an argument. And then we are going to also set the time since last shake. It's going to be time dot unscaled time, which is happening right now. Cool. Now let's get back to unity. Let's put this shake detector script onto our gameplay controller and the shake detection threshold will be 3.6. That's a pretty cool value. And also the min shake interval. I found that the value that works best is 0.2 seconds. So we cannot have two shakes in 0.2 seconds. We can have only two shakes if they happen after 0.2 seconds between each, each other, right? So now we should be able to launch this game, this simple game. So let's launch it. And I am not getting it in the Unity Remote application. And if this happens, you should go to Edit, Project Settings, Editor, 
And here you have Unity Remote. You need to select a device to, to say any Android device. Now save your project. And now when you launch the game, it should actually appear on your... Uh, yes, it appears on your Unity Remote on your device. And now when we shake our device, it's going to shake all of these rigid bodies really nicely. If I shake a certain way, it's always going to go toward that end of the screen. As you can see, right? Now I'm shaking upwards. Awesome. So this is how you can detect shakes and make a really simple shaking game in Unity. If you like this video, give it a like and also share it so that our people are going to learn how to do this awesome thing and make this awesome simple game. And you can obviously expand on this idea even further. The imagination is really the limit. If you don't want to miss more tutorials like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you are going to get really notified about each of my new video. To get the code from this tutorial, click on the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. If you have any suggestions or questions, leave them in the comments, follow me on social media, and see you in the next video.